Hey everyone, I'm going to talk to you about function transformations. So let's check this out. I'm going to use f of x equals absolute value of x. So this v looking function um, for all of the transformations. So let's get right to it. Start with vertical shifts. This is review. If you want to move a function up or down, you simply add or subtract a value outside of the argument. So you're adding it to the whole function. For example, if I add and I'm going to turn this on. If I add 1 to this function, it's going to move up 1. If I add 2, it's going to move up 2, etc. And by the same token, if I subtract a value to the function, so if I say absolute value of x minus 2, it is going to shift down 2 units. So that was a rather simple one to understand. And I'll cut this back off. Then we have horizontal shifts. The horizontal shifts happen inside of the argument of the function. All right, so they affect the x, and it's natural. Anything horizontal is going to um, manipulate or, or change uh, the argument, the x, the input. All right, so here I go. Uh, if I want to move my function to the right, I subtract 1. If I want to move it to the right 2, I'll subtract 2. If I want to move it to the right 6, I'm going to subtract 6. Notice how it says f of x minus 6. All right, and if I want to move it to the left, then I am going to subtract the negative number or... I'm, it, it's going to appear that I'm adding. So here what I have, for example, my h is negative 2, but I'm subtracting. See, my formula has x minus h. So this would actually read uh, the absolute value of x, and I'll, and I'll write it for you. That would actually read the absolute value of x minus negative 2, all right? Or absolute value of x plus 2. Notice how that has shifted me two units to the left, Okay. And the next one that we're going to try out, that, and, that, and those are your shifts. So to shift uh, a function, th those we call the rigid transformations because you're moving the function left, right, up, down, but you're not changing the shape. Now, if we're going to change the shape, think of that as a non-rigid, like a dilation. So I can stretch the function vertically. All right. For example, I can multiply a value to the whole function. And what it does is it makes it taller. So all of my outputs are now... Uh, for example, right here, three times larger, right? And if I want to make it shorter, I'm going to multiply by a fraction. So here, for example, is the same function, but it's one-tenth as tall. It's 10% as tall, all right? So that's vertical stretches. And it's worth noting also that if you stretch it to where your A is negative, you're going to flip the function across the x-axis. So that's pretty neat as well. That's called a reflection across the x-axis, and it's a type, a specific type of vertical stretch, all right? And then we're going to finish up with a horizontal stretch. So the, with, a, with a horizontal stretch, uh, I am going to uh, multiply my input, my argument, by a value. And the larger I, I multiply it by, the more compressed it becomes. So that looks a lot like a vertical stretch. Um, it's actually a horizontal compression. right? And by the same token, if I start using fractions, that looks a lot like a vertical compression. And that's a horizontal stretch, all right? Now my function is becoming wider. So uh, there's kind of a pattern right there. When, when you add or subtract, multiply or divide values to the argument, it's kind of like, a, like visually speaking, like the opposite effect happens. And that's because it's happening within the argument of the function. It's also worth noting you know, that if you have negative, and this one's not the best example, but negative values are going to flip you across the y-axis. Okay, and those are the different types of transformations.